I'm Lisa Cumming, and I teach chemistry in a suburb of Cleveland. This is uh, my 34th year teaching, and I have been using Wacom tools for uh, going on two years now. Um, I have used uh, Wacom tools in a variety of different ways. I have created uh, podcasts for my students to watch. Um, they watch them as previews or they watch them for reinforcement. I have um, worked with students one-on-one -on -one, um, in a Google Meet or Zoom. Uh, I have also uh, annotated PowerPoint slides with my uh, Wacom Intuos uh, to teach teachers in a workshop. And uh, one really cool thing that I've done is I've Bluetoothed the Wacom and then I am able to walk around my classroom and kind of monitor what's going on with students while I'm actually writing on the board. So that's been kind of cool. Um, Wacom tools have really helped me this year. It's been kind of a game changer because our schedule is constantly changing. So every day, you don't know what the schedule is going to be like. So the fact that I have something so flexible to use uh, every day has been really great. And uh, it's also helpful too, because with chemistry, you're working with symbols as in math too. And so it's really nice to be able to write those symbols down, um, you know, when you're working with kids rather than having to search for them in some kind of a program. I also like the authenticity myself of my own handwriting um, while I'm working with students. So these, these welcome tools have definitely been helpful for me this year. Short tutorial on how to use Collabboard and what to use it for. So Collabboard is a mainly business app um, software. Um, it has multiple templates within it that can be used to create projects that, that are then collaboratively shared. Um, I, when I first went into Collabboard, started searching all the templates, trying to see exactly where this would fit into my curriculum. So when I look at a new piece of software or an app, I try to figure out where within my curriculum is there a weak spot or is there an area where I'm maybe not teaching it as strongly as I could, right? So that's kind of where I slip in these new pieces of software. So, so that's how you might want to approach this, right? So this is the um, page that you would go to, to log, once you're logged into uh, Collabboard. And you'll see here um, all of my projects that I've created are on this front page. And then you'll see a create a new project um, button. We're going to take a look at that in a second. And then at the bottom, <clears throat> you're going to see a list of all the projects that I've created. So I'm going to click on this create a new project and let's see what happens. Okay, so that takes us to this screen where you can actually name your project and then you can choose to start a project either from a blank or from a template. So I'm going to choose the template and I'm not going to give it a name quite yet. We can come back to the naming of the project and I'm going to select a template. So this is going to take us to categories, right? Strategy is one of those categories, and then you can scroll through, and there's all different templates in here that you can take and adjust and make your own. So the one that I used out of all of these was towards the top of the list here. It was the can, Kanban board. So this is kind of like a to-do list kind of template. And so what I did was I took it, and I turned it into a categorization um, board. And so I'll show that to you here in a moment. So we can also go into marketing. I didn't happen to find anything in the marketing category that really fit in my classroom, but I think if I went back in here and looked at everything again, I would probably find something within there that I could actually use as well. There's a planning um, category here of templates. Um, I thought this was kind of cool, sticky note window wall template. So I feel like if I thought a little bit that this would be something I could use in my classroom. Um, the flow chart idea I think is something. The um, what I know, what I want to know, and what I've learned, um, like the KWL chart, I feel like that would be something that would be very useful in a classroom. Um, what else is in this particular category? Uh, I think that was it for the planning. And then if we go over to uh, creativity, 
Um, I used, I did use the mind map, um, and I used that actually to create a flow chart. So I think the mind map might be a great idea for a classroom, particularly a science classroom. And then there's the brainstorming category. So there's scamper, which again is kind of like a mind map kind of template. I feel like that would be really useful. Um, and then down at the bottom here, I thought this was kind of cool, six questions. So as a team, collaboratively, the group answers six questions that are intertwined. Um, and I think in a science classroom, after answering those six questions, perhaps the goal there would be for the group to come to some conclusion, right, after, after answering those questions. So I thought that was kind of a neat template. And then there's a few in the games. Now, originally, I looked at the games, and I'm like, nope, we're not playing games. But then as I started to really look at them, this two truths and a lie was quite interesting. And I'll show you I made an activity from there. And then I thought, you know, on the first, during the first couple days of school, it's kind of nice to have an, an icebreaker. And so um, find 10 things in common. This template might work. Or pictures from the past where you actually put up, you could put up baby pictures, right? And try to determine who's who in this um, in this template. So I thought those two would be great for, for icebreakers in a classroom. Okay, so I would go in and I would peruse all of these templates and see, given your curriculum and your what you have available and your students, you know, what exactly would be would be appropriate, right? Um, so I actually went in and I created several um, activities for my students. And the one that I was most excited about were the three actually where I utilized flowcharts. <clears throat> so the first one that I went through and worked through was how to name chemical compounds. So I started with this, I started with the title, chemical nomenclature. And then what's really awesome is if you click on that first box and you click on the little circles over here, it automatically creates a connector to your next topic. So it's very, very simple to create the flow chart. You can change the font, you can change the colors, the size, and you can also import images. So at the very bottom here, I actually put images of examples of chemical formulas with their names. And I think if I did this with a class, I would probably leave out those images. And so that would be the part that the students would have to contribute within their group. So I would kind of get this flow chart started. I may even leave out the explanational parts here that you see in smaller print and have the students also contribute those. So kind of like start the top of the flow chart and then have the students finish the flow chart. So a couple different options for that particular board. And again, remember you can share with a group. So like a group of, I'd probably use three to four students working on the board all at the same time. So I took the same idea and I took a topic in AP Chem that the students struggle with, um, types of solids. And I decided with this one that I would have the students create the whole thing. So I would give them the types of solids title and then the solids that I wanted in there, the four of them that you see here in pink, pink, red. Um, and then I would ask certain things have to be in, in the flow chart. So I would, you know, ask that a description of each is in here and images uh, of each of the different types of solids uh, be included. And so it probably as a finished product might look something like this. And then I feel like you could, you could connect this to a Jamboard and have the students then list in the Jamboard or on a Google slide, like the properties you know, collaboratively, the properties of each one of these different solids, right? So you could do a couple different things, I think, with this flow chart. Then I finally created, I created a third flow chart, and this one was order of reactions. And my walk them into us was really helpful here. I, I feel like I could have used it pretty much in any of these, but in this particular one, it was really useful. Um, so I started with order of reactions. This is part of kinetics, which is a rather large unit in uh, AP chemistry. 
And then I um, put the different orders of reactions. This is another categorization thing. And then I wanted equations in here and I wanted graphs. So this is where my Wacom was really handy. And I think for this, I would probably, with my AP class, I would start out the flowchart. And then I would maybe give them the beginnings of it and then what I would want included. And then the students themselves would um, then create most of this. And of course, if they had a tablet, um, that would make the creation pretty simple. Without the tablet, they would then have to obviously do this on paper maybe and upload it, um, which, which would be perfectly fine too. So another flowchart idea. I thought this was really interesting. And then I created two more. So I decided to go to that uh, Kanban table and turn it into a categorization activity for my honors chemistry students. So I actually created 10, um, 10 sticky notes numbered 1 through 10, reaction 1 through 10. And then I created categories in my table, precipitation reactions, neutralization reactions, redox reactions, miscellaneous, and then a help section. Um, I then connected this to a LIMNU, and on the LIMNU I had a list of 10 reaction numbers, and then the reaction actually written out that the students could look at. And their job then was to take reaction one, on the sticky note and move it into the correct category. So let's say they went to the LIMNU and to them it looked like a neutralization reaction. So they would then grab reaction one, right, the sticky note, and pull it into that category and drop it. And they would do that with all 10 of them. I provided the help column in case they came upon one that they really couldn't figure out. So put it down there right and then as a whole group when we get back together we could discuss those reactions that were put into that um, into that group so i thought this would be a really good way of categorizing reactions because once they can do that then they can start to come up with products of reactions so a good use of this table i think and then the last one that i created here most recently um, i used two truths and a lie right and i thought with misconceptions so misconceptions are kind of big in science in general and most definitely in chemistry and so i created sets of three so out of the three sticky notes that you see here for number one um, two of them are true one of them is false and so the students when they click on them can actually vote um, so they can vote whether, here, I'll click on this one down here, maybe we'll be able to see it better. They can actually vote, they can click on the vote button and decide, oh, do we see it? No, we don't. They can click on the, oh, there we go. They can click on the vote button and they can decide, yes, this is true. Um, or no, this is false. So they can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then I thought again, extend this activity. So the ones that they vote no on, I would then have them go to a Google slide and I would have them um, explain why it was wrong and then perhaps state, change the statement and in such a way so that the statement is true. Okay, so there are five sets of these. So this did not take me very long, right, to go through and actually look for all the different ways to utilize uh, Collaborate templates. So my suggestion to you is to find a gap in your curriculum somewhere and then start perusing the Collaborate templates and see if there's anything that you can adjust to fit within your own classroom. Uh, I just think this app is so useful, right? And and that, and along with your Wacom and being able to write on here, um, I think this would be a real useful tool, right? So thanks for watching, guys.